Any questions to Canada, Latin America, <coughs> Mexico, and Brazil? Yes, please. Uh, have you segmented out the uh, equipment sales for the wide format segments of the industry? I know that the traditional printing presses and uh, other equipment are down, but are there any segments, uh, are you seeing growth in segments for the wide format uh, industry in your countries? Yeah, well, in Canada, for sure. Um, if there's a bright spot, it would be in wide format. Um, that's been recognized for some time now. Uh, as, as printers and others um, use this technology to move into the signage and display industry. So that is, uh, that is technology driving growth for the time being. Now, when we get to a saturation point, I'm not sure. Or, and then it's basically replacement after that. Don't know. Uh, but it is an improving um, area for sure. I think the case in Brazil is uh, the large format is yet not widespread, except for the top leading packaging companies. That's where they're most popular at. Um, one, one minor uh, remark. Interesting enough, this year, the only segment that imported more than last year was the web presses in Brazil. Um, this uh, number surprised me. And the other number that was surprising to me was the finishing, the binding, which is kind of logical. Uh, once you invest in presses, the next thing is you'll discover that the client won't take a, you know, a flat sheet. <laughs> You're going to have to bind it, collate it, do some kind of after work, you know, post press work with it. So immediately after a year where you invest in presses, next year the bindery investment goes up. Down in Mexico, white format is increasing a lot. But only in Mexico, not in Central America and the other countries in, in Latin America. So I think that this digital wide format is the is the, the common thing right now in Mexico and they are printing a lot of it. Any more questions, please? My question is directly specifically to Brazil. One of the biggest problems we have with exporting machinery down there is the government taxes placed on equipment. Is there any thought that some of these will receive a, a, a re reduction? I don't think that situation will change in the near future, to be frank with you. The biggest challenge that we have, see, the Brazilian tax system is Understood. uncomprehensible. <laughs> comprehensible for Americans and comprehensible for Brazilians. <laughs> we've been dealing with, we've been living with this crazy system that only goes worse it grows worse every single year. Uh, I was the president of Abigra for six and a half years. 80% of my agenda was taxes. I went to Brasilia 92 times in six and a half years to talk to the Brazilian governor about taxes. And worse yet, some of us printers don't know which tax we have to pay because there are so many. And city will tell us that we owe taxes to city level, and state will say, no, no, this is my tax. The biggest challenge is to try to convince the government to abolish tax on investments, to reduce or to zero taxes on investments, because uh, it's a competitive disadvantage that Brazil will never have. But we'll always have this competitive design advantage because when you pay one million dollars for equipment in Brazil, like say a printing press, if you want to ship it into the country, you pay immediately 32 percent. So you start off one third higher than any other country in the world that I know of. So we are heavily taxed before you print the first sheet of paper you already owe to the government 32% on your equipment. <laughs> Before the first real dollar comes into your pocket, you pay one third of the machine to the government up front, which is stupid because it stops investment.
But this has been a, a war that we've been waging for like decades against the government. And it will continue, I think. We have a new election next year. We'll come back into the agenda for sure as a, an industry nationwide demand towards the government. Our, our plea is tax any other things after we have invested. But after we've placed the machine, we've installed it, we we're working, we we're making money, then it's no problem. But before, it's done. Uh, this is uh, Director Mario uh, Britta. We don't have a tax problem. We, we sell reconditioned pre-owned equipment. Mm -hmm. Brazil will not allow our equipment to go into Brazil. So we don't care about your taxes, but how do we get our equipment into your country? Some of the equipment that comes into Brazil, um, supposedly there is a, a, a ban on, let's say, reconditioned equipment. But there are a lot of exceptions that you may work your way through. Um, legally. legally. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Legally, yeah. It's, it's, it's normal. Um, not, I'm not suggesting anything illegal here. <laughs> You're YouTube. <laughs> I'm on YouTube, on YouTube, you know. <laughs> and I couldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't leave this country <laughs> if I did. But... Uh, Frankly, uh, honestly, yes, you can import some uh, used equipment, reconditioned equipment. There is a very uh, demanding process. I mean, you have to prove the, the price at, at the place you were sending the equipment from. You, uh, once uh, you have the to state, request for... The state of the equipment. The state of the equipment. You have to have a, a, a formal declaration, a documentation, a statement from somebody qualified that equipment is actually working in such and such condition. Um, you have to prove that the price you are requesting for your, your equipment is fair. Um, let's say you're selling $1 million equipment. Not, don't price it at 500000 I mean, they have means to detect that. And uh, they will stop your equipment from coming into the country. We've, we've seen it happen. So there is a very detailed and long process, but yes, it is a legal process and it can happen. Not for all equipment, for some. And you can have some tariff reductions if you don't have local productions or similar productions. So the first thing you have to prove that you have, you have similar productions there, so you can have some tariff reductions to do that. Yeah. Your if you question. have something that's not similar, there is a process that you have to submit. Um, so the local manufacturer will have to say, okay, we don't manufacture this kind of press or this kind of binder in Brazil, so you can import it under specific conditions. Next question. Can you hear me with this? Oh, yeah. Um, in view of the import tariffs, then, are you seeing a growth of indigenous Brazilian printing press manufacturers? We're starting to see that in wide format graphics. We supply a component to wide format graphics people who are now building machines in Brazil, or at least in some cases assembling Chinese components to make machines. Anything like that happening, say, with web presses, flexor presses, stuff like that? Flexor presses, yeah, we might have that happening in flexor presses, but not on web presses or offset presses or sheet fed presses for the matter. No. Um, we had a problem. We had a, a, a Brazilian local manufacturer of uh, sheet fed presses years ago, Da Ferner, which delivered a machine called Katu. Um, and that proved to be a hard obstacle to overcome because they said this machine, this equipment is similar to a Heidelberg brand new press. And we had to prove technically running the press that we're not comparing apples to apples. Yes, it was a sheet fed press, but the performance was nowhere near the performance of the top world presses. And we proved it and, uh, you know, imported equipment. Some people here experienced that with us at that time and we imported equipment from, uh, you know, 
the globe. I don't see a local press manufacturing on the offset side developing Brazil. No. This is past. Flexo, yes. For the flexo market, which is growing, yes. There are some local players. And small webs, too, like the old uh, continuous forms webs. Any more questions? If you know, I'd like once more thank you a lot for your attention, for coming up, for sharing these moments with us. I'd like to thank too much Henry, Mario, Samora for their brilliant presentation. Well, we'll be here for more time, so we'll be in touch. Thanks a lot for everybody. Thank you.